circumstances, situation, and people. Having a right attitude, having a godly attitude, developing a right attitude or right response in the midst of the things that we're going through. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. Here, let's read responsibly. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But, but without, without faith, faith, it, it is, is impossible, impossible to please him. him. For, For he that, that cometh to God, God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for the body of Christ. And Father, I ask, Lord God, that you would let the grace of God and the peace of God that surpasses understanding, let it guard and rule our hearts and give us insight, Lord God, today into your plan and your purpose for our individual and collective lives. Bless us, Lord God, with strength. In the name of Jesus, Touch, Lord God, those that are listening by way of television and let your precious Holy Spirit break the bread of life to each one according to your purpose and according to your plan. This we ask in Jesus' name. And Lord, we take authority over the atmosphere now. We bind back every interference, Lord God, uh, with your, to your word. And Lord God, let the thoughts of the hearts be brought into subjection to your purpose and your plan and your Holy Spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, release us now and let the power of our Lord be wonderful in this place today. In Jesus' name we pray. Take full control now. We bless you and everybody say it. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We're real thankful to the Lord for... Uh, each one that's here today, and I want to reiterate, I'm sure Toy announced the outreach that's coming up in the last of April, and um, we do have some flyers that are being made. We'll be here by the next service on Wednesday, hopefully by the grace of God. We want to thank the Lord for Minister Hope that's been so gracious to see to it that they were doing and done. So we thank God for her. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Well, we have the book of Hebrews here. Uh, looking into Hebrews, we've been in the book of Ephesians, which deals a lot with the uh, the mission of the church. And 
um, today just uh, seeking the Lord for the blessedness of the people of God and for what he had in mind, we, he took me to Hebrews. The writer here of Hebrews in uh, verses 32 to 39, coming up to, building up to chapter 11 here, out of all that he was saying, we said the key word here in this book of Hebrews is better, a better covenant, right? The better priesthood, better covenant built upon better promises. And God had pointed out that he was superior to Moses, or Christ superior to Moses, superior to the angels, and in his high priestly role, superior to Aaron. And um, so he was admonishing them to give, stead, uh, give heed, or steadfast heed to the word of God, seeing that uh, the word of God is, uh, in the old days, if they were given by angels, they were steadfast and brought to pass, then how much more the word that's been being delivered by Christ the Son, will it be certainly steadfast. So um, so the writer asks the readers to remember their uh, immediate post-conversion lives in which they trusted God and endured the persecutions of men. When they first got saved, obviously those that brought the gospel, they prepared them well that they would suffer uh, for the cause of Christ. And so when they came into the faith, they were willing to suffer persecutions and they didn't really have a problem and they overcome and they suffered and they went according to studies they suffered and they had the right attitude in their sufferings and uh, they things were taken from them but they endured and uh, uh, but they you know so their faith was commendable so he was calling them back to that point go back and remember when you first got into the faith how things were. How many know that, or how many of you can relate to the, when you first got saved? You know, when you first got saved, this, there was a newness. There was something that was so different, and you just knew that you had you found Christ, and you found new life, and new peace, and new hope, and new joy. So you, you really just, uh, it was just something that you were willing to just tell others about, and you, all your friends and loved ones that perhaps they weren't saved, you just, you just wanted to tell them about it because it was something new to you. Anybody, can anybody relate to that? And uh, so they were excited. And um, then uh, I think as time went on and little things started happening, suffering, persecutions, and other things went on to sort of discourage people. Some didn't always uh, uh, spring back and were able to shrug it off and say that's just a part of what, you know, we, we're to, be ex uh, to expect. Uh, and so sometimes now in the body of Christ there's little joy, little peace, a uh, little commitment to reaching out to the lost and, uh, as it was in the beginning. And, but he called them to remember be faithful, don't throw away that confidence that you had in God because there's a great recompense of reward. There's great dividends in keeping uh, an expectant attitude, an attitude of faith in uh, the coming of the Lord and the things that God had purpose and plan. Are you with me? Uh, so we need that expectation. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so as he begin to talk to them and share about what they remember what they'd gone through. And then he uh, brought to them their remembrance, the Old Testament characters uh, who went through the same experiences and he, uh, they made the uh, Faith Hall of Fame. They were those that he, he just went down the line and you've, you've read it and we've read it before. Uh, Abel, Enoch, Moses, Abraham, nor the, you know, but these people suffered, you know, common sufferings, and but they uh, obtained a good report, and so we see in verse six he says, "But without faith, it is impossible 
to please him, right? God is invisible. He doesn't always tell us in detail the things that we would like to hear. He's always with us. And he made that clear in his word that he's always with us. But sometimes we just need, uh, or a lot of times, we need encouragement, maybe from the Lord, or we need, we, God will give us encouragement through others. But we're still on the road of faith. We don't get off that road. It's faith that pleases the Lord. So he wanted to call them to that because some were contemplating turning back, turning aside to begin to say, well, the old temple life wasn't so bad after all. You know, they missed it. You know, they perhaps missed some of the friends that may, perhaps weren't converted. But, uh, and so the writer began to tell them that you're on a better covenant established in, upon better promises, better priesthood. Everything is better. And uh, he pointed them to the days that uh, when uh, it's going to all be worth it after a while. Look at someone and say, it's going to be worth it. Amen. Praise God. Their patience, their patience in persecution was a great thing. Enduring it without murmuring was a greater thing. Their rejoicing in it was the greatest of all. Can I say it again? Their patience in persecution was a great thing. I'm about to say patience. Enduring the persecution without murmuring was still greater. Somebody says murmuring. Their rejoicing in it was greatest of all. Somebody say rejoicing. So God calls us to rejoice in the sufferings, the things that we go through. I know you've heard it so many times now. Uh, but it's a way of life for the godly, for the people of God, rejoicing. Uh, it is, it, it, it uh, sends the message that I'm going to keep the right attitude in the midst of what I'm going through. And which is so important in uh, keeping the right attitude. There's not, when we're being tested or tried, it's never pleasant. Otherwise, it's really not a test, right? If it's a real test, we will be tried. And if it's a real test, then it will not be pleasant. But what God seeks to establish and develop in us during the test is developing patience, developing uh, the right attitude or not murmuring about it or complaining, right? And then finally, as one writer said, most of all, he wants us to rejoice in the midst of it. And as we uh, allow him to work those things in and through us, uh, then God is pleased. Faith is that which underlies the inheritance which believers expect to receive. The writer points that out. Faith is the evidence which gives proof to the existence of the unseen world. And uh, uh, it's faith. Through faith we understand, right? That the worlds were framed by the invisible or the word of God. And so we understand that through faith. We don't understand that it's not logic that we can understand this because it doesn't really make a lot of sense logically, right? But through faith, we know that there's a God. We know that there's, uh, uh, that he ruleth over all. And he will bring all things uh, in the, under subjection and under one head that are in Christ eventually by the grace of God. So um, I, I, I hope that we can just together begin to think in terms of choosing to have the right attitude when we're going through. We will constantly face things that's a given, that's a fact, it just goes with the package. And God's desire is to bring us to the point or to strengthen us by his spirit to the point of 
uh, long suffering and, and patience and being uh, rejoicing or rejoicing and giving thanks. So it's, it's, the, it's God bringing us to the point of a godly attitude. I want you to look at somebody and say, He's establishing a godly attitude in us. Now that doesn't just come automatically because we're saved. Paul said, I have learned, right? Would you look at somebody and say, are you learning? Amen. God's got us in his school, right? Praise God. My wife preached this morning a powerful word, and I tell you, I had to comfort my toes here, honey. <laughs> I said, Lord, mm. But it was all good. <laughs> I said quietly after the words, he asked, did I have a comment? I said quietly. I said, no, I don't have anything to say. <laughs> so somewhere between there and now, I kind of got a better attitude. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But she was talking mostly about the very same thing, and I was amazed. I said, "Why? Wow, God wants me to get it. Because she said some of the same thing that I had already he was speaking to me about it, and even up to last night. So after I finished the word and letting him talk to me, and as he was talking to me, I'm writing down, and so I'm saying, mm, mm, mm. wow, Lord. And then, so I said, okay, probably before the week's out, I know I'll get a little challenge, so, uh, so I'm, I'm going to be ready for it, you know. And uh, so I laid down and got an attack from the devil, and I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> Okay, all right. But the Lord is faithful, you know. He's so faithful. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, right? I want you to think about that. That's what the Bible says in Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. So grace comes... Through faith, right? The grace of God came to bring us into salvation as we believe, right? We heard the gospel message that Jesus died for our sins, and we believed that, didn't we? And when we believed that, we were able to receive the grace of God. The grace comes through faith. Keep that in mind. It's what God brought to my remembrance. Grace defined is simply undeserved favor. Can you say that with me? Undeserved favor. So if I want constant undeserved favor in my walk with God... Then I continue to exercise faith in him, right? Everybody with me? All right, so, uh, and I hope this has helped. Like it begin to minister to me. Simple, but it still ministers to me. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. By grace you are saved through faith. And that... Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now, this is simple, but I, I really believe this is what God was putting upon my heart. Um, grace is undeserved favor. It calls, now listen, if, since grace is undeserved favor, it calls for a certain attitude, Right? It calls for a certain response, right? Thank you, sir. Right? Thank you, sir. Right? Somebody does something for you, does a, do a favor for you, and you didn't deserve it. You know, maybe you deserve just the opposite. Then you thank them, and you give praise to them for their grace and their mercy toward us, right? So now, our whole life has been changed because of the grace of God, right? 
So now our whole life now must learn a proper response. Are you with me? A proper attitude of response that says, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord for his goodness, right? So you wonder why God is constantly saying, praise me, praise me. He's saying, let your life literally be a living response to what God has done for us throughout all eternity, right? Can we pause a minute and just give God thanks? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Grace, unmerited, undeserved favor. Hallelujah. Mercy, someone said, mercy is refraining from giving you what you do deserve. Right? And grace is giving you what you don't deserve. Right? <laughs> so we need grace and mercy, right? Grace and mercy. So, since it requires a, or calls for a, a certain attitude of response, let's look at faith. Faith is a trustful reliance upon God. Are you with me? Faith is a trustful reliance upon God. God is with us. Our lives are in his hands, right? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, help me out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He goes further and says, Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to our navel and marrow to our bones. All right, that's faith, trust, reliance upon God. Hebrews 11 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm going somewhere. How many want to please God? How many want your attitude to please God? How many know that it's by grace and not faith, not, not, not works, right? How many want con constant grace, favor, and God's ability on our lives, right? You know, have you heard people say, uh, God, give me grace, man. I, I can't take that. God, I need some more grace, right? Have you heard people say that? Right? So, now, if I need more grace, if I'm at the point where I say, okay, God, I can't take no more. I need grace, right? Grace gives me divine enablement so I can take what I wouldn't take otherwise. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Now, so if I, need, if I need grace, then I need to know how to get grace, right? More grace. The Bible says he, he give it more grace. But before I go there, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So, it was like the Holy Spirit bringing me saying, this is wisdom. This is wisdom. Walking in wisdom, I, we know, basically we know of God. We know God a bit. And we know that he loves us, right? And so we want to govern our lives before him because the Bible says uh, God has uh, uh, chosen us that we would be uh, walk before him and blameless, right? Before him in love. So this is a goal that God has for us uh, to bring us up to that point where we walk before him blameless, holy and blameless, separated and blameless before him as instruments of his glory. So walk in that way, and this is, this is since this is uh, what God has brought us out for, we want to walk with God 
And the wisdom is having a right attitude about life, circumstances, situation, and people. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Having a right attitude. Having a godly attitude. Developing a right attitude or right response in the midst of the things that we're going through. Please don't throw a stone at me. I'm trying to tell the truth. It is so important. And I told you, I've got my, I got my spanking this morning here. And I was really, but, but he was saying, so wisdom is key in life. And since wisdom is key, a, right, a proper attitude or a proper response to the things that we go through is key for us to experience God's constant grace and his constant love. So this is what he's saying. I want you to grasp this. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please. Now, this is what he said in the latter part of verse 6 in Hebrews 11. He said, for he that cometh to God must first do what? Believe that he is. And that he is. A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, this is faith, right? So when I'm operating in faith, I may get down a little bit sidetracked for a second, right? But look at your neighbor and say, you can't stay there. And your focus now must be upon what pleases the Lord. The Bible says in one of the epistles, find out. What pleases the Lord? So let us walk circumspectly as wise people. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Not as fools, but understanding what is good or what the will of the Lord is. Isn't that right? Because we were sometimes darkness, but now we are lights in the Lord. So he says, to walk as children of light. We've been illuminated. We have understanding. The revelation has come to us. We've been brought out of darkness now. Our eyes have been opened. Our lives have been changed. He lit us up by his Holy Spirit. So now we're children of the day. As 